final international break. We're all done and dusted now, aren't we? We're looking forward to the to, to a long stretch. Do you come back into this period with some with some players back on the on the training pitch? Well, we're getting closer to that, to be honest with you. Yeah, there's a, some better signs ahead regarding players coming back. Nathan Redmond is pushing on really well. Yalmar as well. Both played in a under twenty threes game um, a week ago, so that's pleasing. Uh, Lyle as well on the grass, um, still still a little bit away. Ramsey, um, Hanas, Joe Worrell, all progressing in the right way. So, yeah, really, really pleased regarding that. And like I said, things are looking a little bit better. You say, sorry, Scott, you say Lyle's back on the grass. Is this weekend potentially a bit too soon for him? Or This week comes too soon for right. Lyle, for sure, yeah. And um, as always, when I say on the grass, it's still a real low level, but... He's moving in the right direction for sure. So this weekend we will come too soon. A couple of lads do play in your under twenty ones this week. The fact that they've played some some minutes, I mean that's that's a great great sign, isn't it? Good sign, yeah. Of course, uh, training to to game time is obviously very very different in a controlled environment sometimes. And when they obviously can get some some game time, twenty ones and the two boys what what played in them in them games was was very good. They come out come out of them that game as well. So. That's pleasing um, and yeah, moving in the right direction decision now to, to how far they are away from being involved, really. Mm -hmm. When these lads are all back fit, Scott, you're going to have some selection problems, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the hardest part of the job, of course, and any manager, obviously, is a big squad, of, of course. It was an even bigger one um, in the summer and uh, mm. the dynamics that I'll have to manage. Um, it's certainly a headache that I would like and it's one I want. Um, so... A lot of players here at this present moment in time will have been on the treatment table for some time. Good players, quality players. Um, so, yeah, I'm looking forward to, to all of them being fit and the, the demands on, on, on me in terms of managing that situation, of course, are, are there. That's very clear. But um, it's like I said, it's, it's certainly a problem. Or I don't see it as a problem. It's mm. a, maybe a little bit of a headache, but that's fine. Leading into the uh, break, you had the defeat at Millwall. You had a disallowed goal at West Brom. You had a late winner <laughs> just prior to the break, you've had all these emotions. How's it been to try and keep everybody kind of steady? Yeah, I, I think that's probably fair to say. I, I think it's probably been like that throughout the course of, of this year, really, in terms of, look, I, I reference it quite a bit. Um, and I suppose I am reference it from my experiences and my experiences as a player, being in the arena and understanding probably where the players sit in certain moments. And then my experiences as a coach, um, no denying that um, there's been some ups and downs along this short journey, what we've been on so far. Um, and their emotions are, are, are always there. They're always going to be there. They're going to be there in, in game 36. They're going to be there next year. Um, this football club and this team have come off the back of a season last year of huge disappointment and ends with a, with a relegation. Um, and then we go into this season with everything was well documented and the most important thing in in any team in any organization is the stability and how stable one is it's my job as this leader of this team and this group of men and the whole football club to to obviously bring real context onto that and i suppose the ana uh, analogy of just being that umbrella to protect that and bring real stability at this moment is going to be absolutely crucial it will it will define us for sure and again i'm not they're my experiences, what I know. Uh, they're my experiences. Uh, I've been in this. Uh, I've been in the arena. I've been in this environment. I've led teams, and I know too well, you know, that how stability and the stableness of of this group, a young group. That's my job to to constantly bring that. I always reference that, of course, never hiding from the the real truth and where we need to improve, but bringing a real calmness in these moments. Turmoil, what has happened in anyone's life and anyone will experience this turmoil what they certainly need to to have in their moments is some stability and people what are a calm in their moments someone who's maybe experienced in their moments who can who can bring that and that's exactly where we need to be and that's exactly where we are so you know this is an unbelievable group of men at this present moment in time who every 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 week they come every day they come into work and they want to keep improving understand face up to to where we need to improve also take big credit in where we've done incredible um so yeah that 
the emotional roller coaster of what life, what professional sport brings in in our context, what the championship brings, is um, we just we we can't get on that roller coaster, yeah, and that's the roller coaster we can never get on, um, and that's my job to make sure we don't get on that. Um, you get on the roller coaster, uh, the emotional roller coaster. Uh, there's a long battle ahead. Um, we need to stay very stable as a, as an organisation, as a group, and um, keep moving in the right direction. The, the club had six or seven years in the Premier League, and then relegated, then promoted, then relegated again. So, do you feel as though, with that little up and down that they've had that, that, as a football club, it's actually quite a, an important time? Mm -hmm. it, it could go one way or the other on the back of promotions and relegations. For sure, yeah, uh, well, without a shadow of a doubt. Without a shadow of a doubt, what you're talking about there is turmoil. You're talking about highs, lows, and of course that happens. Um, and that's no reflection of last year. I've sat in that position, coming out of the championship and been relegated the following year. Um, but it's at, least, at this present moment in time, stability is key. In everything we do, stability is key. A calmness around the place. An understand of where we want to get to. An understand of what we need to get to there. Um, and take the jabs, take the bumps, um, and our emotional sense on that will be will be critical for us this year. You mentioned um, stability and, and kind of a, an understanding of where the football club is. In terms of uh, you, Scott, I know you went down to see a, a to a local school in Burnley this week. That kind of connection with the town. I know your priorities on the pitch. I get that, but that broader connection to 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 understand the, the town that you're you're working in, how important is that for you? Really important. Um, and I probably come from, I suppose that's my upbringing as well, I probably can relate to that a little bit. I was a young man off a council estate, never ever dreamed in my wildest dreams I would sit in the position I sat in for, for 20 years to play professional sport. And that connection to, to where I was from was vitally important. Um, and now the same. Football is a, is a gravitate for everyone really. It connects people, it brings people together. Um, and I understand, yeah, with with every single bit of it, what it means to every fan base. I understand what it means to every single Burnley fan and the local, the local people. Um, they're the bedrock of any football club. Our fans are the bedrock of this club. They're the mainstayers. Managers come and go. Players come and go. Um, what always stays and what's always consistent is a fan base. Um, and yeah, uh, you know, I often say it to the players that at three o'clock, at three p.m., or at seven forty-five, whatever time that game is, we walk out and cross that line with one sole purpose, and that's to try and please our fans in the way we play, try and get three points, um, and try and connect with them really. Um, and we, we will maintain, and I'll make sure that that is the driver constantly in terms of that, and what our fans relate to working class people exactly like I am and like I was very different now maybe but it, uh, in them moments from where I was a, as a young lad that's I, I held on to some foundations which was hard work fight for everything dig deep when you need to dig deep um, and I hope uh, and I have no doubt to be quite honest with you that this team and this group of players will give that every time you, we look we can be critical in lacks of quality in certain moments or sometimes maybe a, a lack of <clears throat> the detail of what we're playing at or maybe critical of myself where I make mistakes because I'm going to make many this year um, and the players will as well but there's one thing that I don't think you will ever be able to point a finger at us and this group of men and, and, and myself is that we've not given every single bit of us to try and do the right thing. Bristol City this weekend Scott um, you've got a couple of players in each team that have played for the opposite mm. the opposite team, which which can which can happen. Just one in particular, your your captain Josh Brownhill. Um, I was asked this week by a guy from Radio Bristol about what how he's been playing for Burnley, and he said to me he'll, he'll get a great reception when he goes back to Bristol City. Doesn't surprise me that watching Josh for the last few years that that the if he's on your team, yeah. you're going to really appreciate him, aren't you? Right, for sure, yeah. I mean, when you talk about stability and stableness in, in someone, Josh probably echoes that. He's been fantastic since I've walked in here. Um, represents probably everything that we stand for. Um, and yeah, I've been nothing but impressed with him. True leader in that sense. His experiences along with the other boys in this change room, some of them who have experienced the, 
the journeys of promotion and been around this football club for some time. Um, Josh epitomises that and I've been nothing but impressed with him and rightly so that he gets a, a welcome in which we, we suspect he will because um, he's someone who exactly before how I've answered some of your questions probably stands for every bit of that. Um, in terms of the opposition, lunchtime kick off, it looks a really good fixture to get back into, doesn't it? Yeah, it's going to be a, it's going to be a tough fixture. Very good team, uh, got some really good results over the last few few weeks. Changed their way a, li a little bit and have come out with some good results. Coming off the back of a, a brilliant result in their last game as well. So, twelve thirty kick off on on Saturday. Well, as always, we'll prepare for for the battle that we're going to face and the, and the challenges we're going to face. And as always, prep ourselves to, to obviously cause them as many problems as we can. Cheers, Scott. Good luck. Thanks, Scott. Thank you, man. Thank you, Scott.